Chapter 12, end game. I think we found our secret airfield. Bolin, once we get down there, I need you to tear up those runways. We can't let those aircraft take off. It's a great idea. <laughs> when I was a boy, a firebender struck down my entire family and left me scarred. Oh yeah, that story. That's a lie, right? That never happened. That's a lie, Amon. <laughs> that was more direct than I thought I it would be, but okay. Oh damn. We have nothing to fear from the Avatar. Let's hear what she has to say. What the heck? Damn, Amon is just so composed. That's part of what makes him so sinister, is like he never loses his cool, no matter what. He uses bloodbending to do it. Amon is a waterbender. <laughs> Isn't this a mistake? Because right now it's her word against his. She needs to find some way, get him to show his powers, like Tarlock did. His father was Yakon, and his brother is Councilman Tarlock. <laughs> An amusing tale. One interesting thing about this is like, we've seen Korra struggle with the politics of Republic City, but here she is like fully engaged in it, right? Like she's literally giving a speech in front of a crowd. Um, is that character growth? I don't know. <laughs> But I will show you the truth. What the... what's gonna be? This is what a firebender did to me. What? What did he do it to himself? Oh no. Asami, I know I have hurt you, but I believe that we can be a family again. How can we be a family after everything you've done? Mom would hate you for what you've become. Ouch. I don't suppose you know how to metal bend. That is a negative, sir. That would be a great time to learn. <laughs> Naga! <laughs> I like that heroic Naga music. <laughs> Naga! Oh, damn. Naga can metal bend confirm. Who needs a metal bender? We got <laughs> Naga! Yeah. yeah. I'm going after those airplanes. No, 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 no. Why is this on me so cool? <laughs> she just gets on the in the mech warrior. What do you know? Just, just like, like the a car. Future industries forklift. Yeah, go figure. Oh, what the heck? Hell yeah. Making the family proud. General Iroh. One thing I was thinking about with Amon is we've seen he's an amazing fighter. We've seen he can dodge and evade everyone's attacks. I was thinking maybe he inhibits people's powers through bloodbending so that he can easily beat them in a fight while also looking very powerful. It's almost like he can feel their movements, right? I guess not. Oh, she you knows classic horror movie thing. Yeah. No, Cora. What the heck? No, no way. I told you I would destroy you. Wait, what? Did that really just happen? They're definitely cramming in the General Iro coolness in one episode here. I mean, it's pretty awesome, not gonna lie. Like, this dude is just flying around taking down planes. Wow. Watch out for the statue! <laughs> He's so cool, damn. At least the mask was there to protect it. There you go. Thanks for looking out for me, Aang. That was cute, I like that. Sami! <laughs> oh damn, Naga's just showing up this episode. Naga top tier confirmed. Asami. No, is she gonna fight her dad in a mech warrior? It's 
true, he is. All right, so that scene didn't have the weight I think they wanted it to have. I think they're going for this dramatic father and daughter showdown, but it felt more pulpy to me because they're fighting in mech warriors, right? But even though I think the execution wasn't perfect, I think uh, there is something to what happened with Sato just now. When people experience extreme emotional trauma, you sometimes funnel yourself into a way of being that protects you from having to deal with it. People form their habits and their identities around things that they just don't understand or that cause them pain. And the deeper you go down that path, the harder it is to actually have perspective on it and to see things as they should be in balance rather than like, this thing is bad and these people are bad and I'm good for not being that way. Shifting course means shattering that defense mechanism you've built for yourself and it's it can be incredibly painful and terrifying. So it's it's easier just to cling to this idea that no, those things are bad and I was right this whole time and I am the good one. For Sato, changing his perspective means also admitting all the horrible things he's done. It was hard enough for him to accept that his wife was gone before he did all these things. Now he has to accept that his wife is gone and that he became the evil that he hated. And he's just not giving up. He's in too deep. You really are a horrible father. Sucks for Asami. I can't believe this. There's no, what the heck? I, I don't know what to think. I just saw you, Bloodbender. You traitor! I dedicated my life to you. Yeah, I didn't think I'd ever have sympathy for this guy. You served me well, Lieutenant. Nice. Good job, Mako. Damn. How is she gonna get her powers back? I'm impressed. No one has ever gotten the better of me like that. It is almost a shame to take the bending of someone so talented. Mm. Almost. I like that, because they've been very subtle about it, but I think Amon really does value power. I think he is really carrying out Yokon's legacy while telling himself he's different. Going back to the lieutenant, yeah, you gotta be real careful of people who are, are using rhetoric for their own agenda because you never know exactly what they're after. And people may be your friends today because you agree on this issue, but if they're not good people, they'll turn on you as soon as it's convenient for them. It's really hard to navigate that space, you know, the power space. Anytime there's something at stake, there are gonna be people who are using the issue to leverage their own personal agenda. And it's not binary either. It's not like they're e they either care about the issue or they're leveraging power. I think usually it's both, just to different degrees. And so that's part of the difficulty is like, everyone has that potential, even people who really care about things. Once they get in that fast track, they can start to see, ooh, this is gonna be good for me. They don't have to care about the issue so much. They don't have to toe the line anymore. They can kind of do what they want. And this is why leadership is so treacherous and difficult, even for really good people who actually do care about issues. No, not Mako. No what? Impossible. I can airbend. Wait. So he couldn't take it away because she didn't have it yet? She just learned it? Is that what it is? No, you don't. Did you see what happened? Did you see what happened? Yeah, everyone saw Mon fly out the window. Oh, he just, I knew that was gonna happen. He just played his hand. Oops. Oh, it was makeup. The Avatar was telling the truth. Um, you sure you, you've dealt with the situation fully? <laughs> Where is Amon? Oh. I'm sorry for what I had to do to you. Our father set us on this path. Fate caused us to collide. I should have left with you and yeah. your boys. Leave with me now. Wow. We have a second chance. We can start over together. Nice. Is he gonna do it? Tarlock has it exactly right. It seems like he has some closure on the situation. I really like that as a theme. The idea that your past is there waiting for you. Sometimes you encounter the reality of certain things way before you're ready to handle them. And sometimes you have to run away just to give yourself time to grow and strengthen. But there comes a time when you have to circle back and kind of like close that chapter because without the awareness of that, I think there's always gonna be things lingering that haunt you you know, that affect your actions even if you don't realize it. It's hard, it's really challenging. I feel like sometimes for me, my brain puts walls around it. You know, I can't even see it. It takes a certain experience or a certain 
conversation or a certain show or something to like shatter the the boundary and i'm like oh yeah remember that that was crazy and then trying to reconcile the present with the past and see i can draw a straight line between that thing that happened and the way i'm acting now and just the consciousness of that makes it easier to act in a way that is less constrained less delusional i'm not sure if it's over yet but i think it would be a really beautiful ending for amon and tarlock to maybe not run away together but to just realize that they are not enemies they come from the same stock they are dealing with the same issue and that they can stop perpetuating the cycle once they've come to terms with their past True to his name. Great. <laughs> now I have to entertain my brother. The two of us together again. There's nothing we can't do. Yes, no attack. Something's wrong. Oh no. Live happily with your brother. This is not the way. It will be just like the good old days. No! Damn it. Tarlock didn't believe that they could break the cycle. They were about to head into the same situation that Yukon did, right? Like, Yukon was defeated by the Avatar, started a new life, but couldn't resist the power, and ended up creating the monster that was Iman. Personally, I don't like his choice, though, and I don't agree with it. I think you gotta give people a chance. Going back to one of the themes of the previous videos, potential has value. And Amon could have done great things, and it's not Tarlock's call to decide what the future is. I think they deserved a happy life, you know? It's not their fault that they turned out that way. The beauty of the ending for them was that they realized that things were on them, and they took it into their own hands. And so, it would have been nice to see them try to reconstruct their lives, and have a chance to live. So I don't like that Tarlock just took that away. I'm very interested to hear what you guys think about that. Let me know if you think Tarlock did the right thing or not. At the very least, I'm happy they got a nice moment, one moment of realization about who they actually were. Katara! <laughs> Long time no see. I tried everything in my power. I cannot restore Korra's bending. How are they going to deal with this? What does this mean for the world? When Tarlock took you, I was losing my mind at the thought of never seeing you again. I realized... I love you, Korra. I... I can't... Korra! Her first love is bending, and she lost it. It's not the time. Was that a subtle way of showing she's thinking about now, Tenzin, jumping? I just want to be left alone. But you called me here. Whoa, finally! You have finally connected with your spiritual self. When we hit our lowest point, we are open to the greatest change. Hmm. With that one line, Aang is already infinitely more useful than all the other <laughs> avatars were for him in counseling. <laughs> I love you too. Bending first, love second. <laughs> oh, she can give it back. Oh, I'm so happy. For some reason, it makes me happier that Lynn gets her powers back than <laughs> Korra. I don't know why. <laughs> she deserves it. That's great. She can actually, actually restore balance in like a very real way now. I am so proud of you, Avatar Korra. You can definitely see how the constraints of one season affected it. That being said, given what they had, I think it was it was great. I think I enjoyed that season a lot. It was only 12 episodes, but there was a lot there. Korra, I feel, was developed nicely. Um, I love the side characters. The villains were great. I feel terrible about Amon and Tarlac at the end, but I respect and sympathize for both of them. There's a nice little circle for Aang here, too. This started with Aang taking away bending and ends with him giving bending back. It's helping the world through a constructive process rather than a destructive one. Because of his action, Korra can then extend that to the rest of the world and bring balance back again. So it's sort of Aang, like, making up for 
something that he caused in the world. Anyway, thank you for sticking around for this season. I didn't expect this kind of support for Korra. Um, I'm having a great time. I'm looking forward to season two. Even though I've heard it's not as good as season one, I think probably we can find a way to enjoy it. I know this is a long video already, but two quick announcements, one happy, one sad. The good is Patreon is up. I put up doing Patreon for a long time because I just enjoy doing this and I wasn't really looking for financial compensation for it beyond ad revenue. But the benefits of Patreon are it allows me to not be so constrained by um, people targeting me for frivolous copyright claims. And also when I get to a certain level on Patreon, it will it will allow me to make videos more frequently because right now I have a job. The more support I get on Patreon, the more time I can take away from work and the more videos can come out. I'm hoping to get to a point where I can do videos daily and then maybe two a day, but that's down the road, who knows. Sad news is we gotta say a goodbye to Cabbage Bro. It's been great having you here. You haven't added that much really. Um, you kind of just sat there creepily. We appreciate you all the same. You'll always be part of the, the Fruit Clan. And yeah, let's give, give a round of applause for Cabbage Bro. He may be back in a different form, but uh, this one, this this shell is uh, it's not holding up too well. I actually smelled up. Not too bad. We'll see. Maybe he has another video left in him. Thank you guys so much again. I'll see you for season two.